for life to appear in the universe. Some values of fundamental physics, the gravitational force, or the mass of an electron, for example, must fall within one very narrow range. This suggests that it is unlikely that the universe would get a range of values comparable to the existence of life. But we see a very different picture. The initial conditions of the universe and the laws of physics are almost perfectly set up for life to have a chance to evolve. Judge for yourself. The force that binds together the elements in the nucleus of an atom has a value of 0.007. What would happen if that value was 0.006 or even less? then there would be only hydrogen in the universe. What if that value was 0.008 or even higher? Then hydrogen would synthesize heavy elements. In these two examples, chemical complexity would be physically impossible, and without it, there would be no life. Here's another example. The physical possibility of chemical complexity depends on the masses of the basic components of matter, electrons and quarks. If the mass of the bottom quark were three times greater, the universe would again have only hydrogen, if the mass of the electron were greater than 2.5 times, there would be only neutrinos in the universe. No atoms and no chemical reactions. Gravity is a powerful force, but it's much weaker than the other forces acting on atoms, by a factor of about 1036. If gravity were a little stronger, stars would form from a small amount of material, be smaller, and live less. For example, then the sun would have existed for 10,000 years instead of 10 billion then our star would have no time to help create complex life. By the way, and if gravity were even a little weaker than it is now, stars would be much colder and would not explode with supernova. Life would be impossible because supernova are the main source of many of the heavy elements that form the ingredients for life. Astrophysicists have so far tried unsuccessfully to explain the nature of space, time, and matter. So far, the general theory of relativity is incompatible with quantum mechanics. However, it is also impossible to assume that we will never overcome these obstacles. There are high hopes that someday physicists will proudly present to the public the full story of the fundamental nature of the universe. Until then, physics tells us virtually no information about the nature of the universe. But then, what does it say? The fact is that physics is a predictive tool. Even if one does not know what mass and force are, one can recognize them in the world. Using the physics equation of Newton's law of gravitation, a person can predict what will happen with great accuracy. This predictive ability has allowed man to manipulate the natural world in extraordinary ways and has led to a technological revolution that has changed the entire planet. But given this, what then can we say about the nature of the physical universe? English astronomer Arthur Eddington was the first scientist to confirm the general theory of relativity. Reflecting on the limitations of physics on the nature of the physical world, Eddington argued, the only thing we really know about the nature of matter is that a part of it possesses consciousness. The nature of matter outside the brain is inseparable from the matter inside the brain. Philip Goff, professor of philosophy at the Institute of Central Europe in his book, Consciousness and fundamental reality developed these reflections as an extended argument for panpsychism, the view that all matter has a conscious nature. There are two ways of developing the basic panpsychist position. The first is micropsychism. This is when the smallest particles of the physical world have consciousness. Micropsychism should not be taken as an absurdity in which quarks have emotions or electrons feel anger. Human consciousness is a complex thing involving subtle and complex emotions, mental and sensory experience. But there is nothing that prohibits the manifestation of consciousness in extremely simple forms. We tend to think that the conscious experience of a horse is much simpler than ours, and that the experience of a chicken is much simpler than that of a horse. The simpler organisms become, the rarer it is for them to manifest consciousness at a given moment. The simplest organisms don't have any conscious experience at all. But perhaps the light of consciousness never goes out, but rather dims as organic complexity decreases from flies and plants and bacteria. For the micropsychist, this fading but never off continuum also goes into non-organic matter, into fundamental physical entities, perhaps electrons and quarks, which possess rudimentary forms of consciousness reflect their extremely simple nature. Some scientists and philosophers have recently concluded that this kind of bottom-up picture of the universe is outdated and that modern physics says we live from the top down. It's been called holistic. 
This is a universe in which the complex whole is more fundamental than its parts. For example, the table in front of you does not exist because of the subatomic particles that make it up. But instead, it is the subatomic particles that exist because of the table. In sum, all things exist because of an ultimatum complex system, the universe as a whole. It sounds mystical, but there are strong scientific arguments in favor of holism. Some philosophers argue that the phenomenon of quantum entanglement is excellent evidence for holism. Entangled particles behave even when separated by distances so great that it is impossible to transmit a fast signal between them. If we combine holism with panpsychism, we get cosmopsychism, a picture in which the universe is conscious and the consciousness of animal humans derives not from the consciousness of fundamental particles, but from the consciousness of the universe itself. The cosmopsychist does not need to think of a conscious universe with human features of consciousness, like thinking and rationality. Cosmic consciousness needs to be thought of as a mixture devoid of intelligence or judgment. The intelligent life of the universe may be a little closer to the intelligent life of a human being. Cosmopsychism admits that the mental faculties of the universe were intermediaries between value facts and cosmological facts. On this view, which we may call cognitive cosmopsychism, the universe itself fine-tuned the laws to fit value considerations. When did this happen? In the first few seconds of the universe, known as the Planck Epoch? To understand, we need to assume that the universe has a basic ability to recognize and respond to value considerations. This is very different from what we are used to knowing about things, but converges with what we observe. All we can observe is essentially just the behavior of things. The forces from which this behavior arises are invisible to us. Humans routinely assume that the universe is governed by a series of irrational chains of cause and effect. However, it is possible that the universe's ability to respond to value considerations is to blame. But how does one rethink the laws of physics from this perspective? Occam's razor, the principle that other things being equal, more restrained theories are favored, holds in this case. But would it be restrained to attribute fundamental awareness to the universe? Not at all. The physical world must have some kind of nature, and physics tells us nothing about that nature. But also to suggest that the universe has a conscious nature rather than an unconscious nature would not be very correct from the position of Occam's razor. The first sentence can be considered more restrained because it continues with the only thing we know for sure about the nature of matter. Brains have consciousness. Another detail that applies to cosmopsychism is that if the universe fine-tuned the laws back in the Planckian era to allow life to emerge billions of years in the future, then it must somehow understand the consequences of its actions. Cognitive cosmopsychism must allow that, at the time of the basic arrangement, the universe represents the full potential consequences of all possible actions, which is also important. Cognitive cosmopsychism avoids the false predictions that other theories make. The idea that the universe represents consciousness acting in response to value judgment gives us a rather extravagant picture. What do you think? Click the subscribe button, ensuring you won't miss out on, on anything.